Well, welcome back to the Steve Rob Show. Today I'm going to revisit a video I did last June. One of my most popular videos. I'll put a link down below if you're interested in looking at it. I haven't even looked at it in a long time. It's probably like well over a million views by now. But it was testing inverters. And I, I thought it was quite an interesting experiment. And I got a couple of really decent questions out of that. And one of them was, Steve, are these ports upside down? Guys, to me, they look upside down. I wire anything like this, a receptacle. I put the grounds on the bottom, and they got them upside down. It doesn't really make a difference. Um, they're all made with a small slot and a big slot, and, uh, you know, that's your uh, power and your uh, neutral. So, yeah, so it, they're made safe, as far as I'm concerned they are. But the main question I want to answer today was, I did some testing, and I used, uh, I'll show you this right here. I used this heat gun, and uh, there it is there. So we got 230 watts max and 150 watts minimum. So it would run, this 300 watt inverter would run on the 150. The first click, it would run. I go on the second click, and it would trip the breaker, and it would uh, not work. So the idea was, is it possible to do this? I'll show you. Can you join these two together in say one outlet and get the full capacity out of your inverter? And I'm saying no, you can't do that. You can't do that. And I can explain why and I got a little bit of a setup done here where uh, I'm gonna show why you can't do that. Now, this is a 300 watt inverter. Uh, the maximum it will peak out at is 600. Now that's between both the outlets separately. So theoretically, one outlet is 150 and it'll have a max of 300. Now it also depends on how long it's willing to peak. So if one side can only take 150 watts, how long will it peak at 300 before it trips the breaker? And that's generally Something you're going to have to experiment with. I really don't see too many statistics on uh, showing the specs on how long before it'll trip. But as you can see in the last video I did, as soon as I pulled the trigger to the second stage, yeah, it just, it, it shut it right down. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do things a little bit different. I'm going to use a, uh, a drill, a variable speed drill, so you can see a little bit better. And I also got a different piece of equipment hooked up here. I have a, uh, a watt meter. So you're going to be able to see the wattage as this happens and you'll see the effect of why you cannot join the two ports together to get the maximum rating out of an inverter. Or whether it's got three or four or five, what, how many ports, doesn't really matter. I have never seen one so far, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I've never seen an inverter that had multiple ports that you could get all the wattage out of one port. Now I haven't seen it yet. If they do, I'd be love to see which one that is. So I got it all set up here. I'm gonna to try to get you all zoomed in to get everything in the shot and we'll do a little bit more testing. Okay, so the inverter's turned on, you can hear it. And I have the variable speed drill here. And I'll just show you here just for reference. And let's see if that'll zoom in there. But that's uh, that's 4.5 amps, which is too much for this. But it's a variable speed drill. And uh, we're gonna see what happens. So I'm just gonna pull the trigger. And I'll just do it again for you. See, it wouldn't start, right? But we'll slowly pull the trigger and see if it runs. And yes, this time here, it looks like it was uh, four amps, uh, average one point, uh, point one nine. Let me see here. One eight was the uh, average, which is real low, and 
the wattage was up there quite a bit. So let's just try that again here. I'll just pull her out and then you can hear the inverter is struggling to keep up and then it will run. So it is about 200 watts and that's more than the maximum but you could see that what's happening there is it's only going to allow that for a certain amount of time and then it's going to shut it off. It'll overheat it for sure. But uh, yeah, I was surprised that it peaked out at four. Then of course it would drop and drop and drop as you, uh, you're you using it. But I thought that was a valid experiment and showing you the reason why you can't join two of them together. Okay, so as you can see, when I first just pulled the trigger hard once, it just stalled it and then slowly it would build up. And I'm pretty impressed that it could actually do that because it's uh, actually over trading, but I know for sure that I would more likely overheat it and uh, you know, it, it's not gonna last doing that kind of stuff. But what I proved in the first video was, yeah, if you give it a, a good blast of, uh, <laughs> of current, uh, no, it can't keep up, you know, but a variable speed drill, yes, it will keep up. Now, I'll tell you what would happen real quick is if I tried to drill something with that and put a load on it, it would just stop. It, it, you couldn't do nothing with it. That's just freewheeling, and which is very easy, but un, it, it's got no load on it. And then that's another big uh, consideration you have to think about. So 300 watt inverter is 150 a side, and that's all you're going to get out of it. So could we drill anything with this? No, 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 I don't think so. You want to try it? Let's try it. Let's, let's see if we could drill something with this the way it is. Okay, here's the drill. I got it plugged in just like it was before. And uh, I'm gonna show you. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be completely useless. Let's just take a look. So again, I'll do the same thing. See guys, like that's not gonna do nothing, look. It's got absolutely no power to it. When the amperage uh, spikes up, it just kills it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a testing on inverters. And the only advice I could give anybody about inverters is don't play with electricity. Um, you have to really know what you're doing. And you know, you could start a fire, you could do all kinds of damage. These inverters are not meant to be overloaded. And depending on where they are, it could be very dangerous, you know, and there's shock, uh, you know, you get shocked, you get all kinds of stuff out of these things. So you got to be very careful. But the one thing I would stress the most is, in my experience, I always get twice as big of an inverter that I'm going to need for the wattage. So whether you're looking at wattage or if you're looking at amperage, I like to get twice as big of an inverter. I see too many people buying small inverters and trying to do too much with them. I had a buddy buy uh, one of these kind of inverters, like a 600 watt, and he wanted to plug it into his cigarette lighter in his car. And I told him, I said, no, no, it doesn't work like that. I mean, you're not going to get anything out of that inverter. You might get, you know, like a couple of hundred watts out of it or something like that at the most, but you're not going to get 600 watts. You have to actually attach it to a battery. So there's a lot of things with inverters you have to be careful about and read the instructions. Now, there's one thing I'll tell you about the instructions on these here. They're not very good. So, I mean, there's lots of uh, videos out there of people that will explain to you exactly about inverters and how they should run. But I thought that was a legitimate question to ask. Can you join the two ports together or three or four, whatever it is, and get the full capacity out of your inverter? And no, you can't. Um, as the amperage creeps up, you're going to trip either one side or the other side or one of them. Each port can only take a maximum of so many watts and it will just shut it down. So they do make inverters that on the far side of the inverter away from the receptacles is a block and you can get maximum out of that block for the whole inverter and uh, that's you know a more expensive inverter to buy. So I hope you enjoyed this little bit of an experiment today and uh, talking about inverters. So thanks for joining me here today. If you've never seen this channel before, you're welcome to subscribe. Let's come back. 
Let's have some more fun. Cheers, guys.